record on this computer. So guys, welcome to chapter two. We are going to really put everything together today with this, um, with this chapter. Last week, we talked about the accounting cycle and the beginning of the accounting cycle, how we take a transaction and we analyze it and we try to process like what accounts have been affected, what's changing. And we learned about showing debits and credits to each account. And then after we learned all that, we created what we called a trial balance. We covered a lot last week. This week, we're going to complete it. And we are going to talk about the end of the accounting cycle. Now, what we did last week is we learned about the various transactions that happened during the year. We know how to analyze them and to record them. But at the end of the year, we might need, or we will need to make some adjusting journal entries. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So these adjusting journal entries are going to make the financial statements more accurate. After we prepare these adjusting journal entries, we then will prepare financial statements. Then we're gonna talk about something called closing entries where we're gonna close out the book so we can start the next period fresh. Then we will learn how to do what's called a closing trial balance. Now, as we've talked before, accounting is handled by the accrual basis of accounting. What that means is we record revenues. I wanna get rid of this search item piece here. I don't know why that's sitting in here. We record revenues. It's just driving me nuts. What is that? I don't know how to fix it. We record revenues in the period in which we provided the goods or services, not necessarily when we got the cash. That is called the revenue recognition principle. And guys, you will see it on the quiz in a multiple choice. So know that the revenue recognition, sorry guys, this is driving me nuts. Do you know why this enter your search term is sitting here? What am I doing? Can't be that difficult. Oh. We went away. Let's hope. So know that the revenue recognition principle states that we record revenues in the books when we provide the goods or services to the customer. Not when we get paid, but when we've completed the job. The expense recognition states that expenses are reported in the period that they helped, um, at the revenues they helped to generate. That is called the matching principle. We match our expenses with the revenues they help to generate. Know those two items, because I promise you, you will see them again. So how, what are we talking about? Well, basically guys, let's think of a cruise ship. The cruise is set to sail. Yep, on the outside or inner lining of the ship. The cruise is set to sail in April. Make me another thing of coffee. In March, the cruise line purchases all these supplies for the April trip. In April, the cruise line purchases all their fuel. 
And then in May, the cruise company pays the salaries that were earned in April. So even though some costs happened in March, some happened in April, and some happened in May, all of them are going to be recorded against the revenues in April. Even though in March the supplies were purchased, they didn't get used up until April. In April is when the fuel was used up and they paid for it. In April is when the salaries were incurred, even though they weren't paid for until May. All of those items are going to be recognized against the revenue in April. Most expenses are recorded in the same period as the revenues they help to generate. So guys, which statement best describes when expenses should be recorded? Expenses are recorded when paid. Expenses are recorded the day a company promises to pay. Expenses are recorded when the cost is used to help produce the revenue or none of the above. See? Excellent. C is the correct answer. Now, somebody some needs to mute their um, mic, guys. Can you hear that? Okay. Um, so now we're going to talk about what we call cash basis, but we know financial statements need to be presented using the accrual basis. Accrual basis is we record revenues when they have been earned and we record expenses against those revenues they helped to create. Cash basis is much easier. You just record revenues when you get the cash, expenses when you pay the cash. No, the accrual basis is when goods and services are provided to the customers earned, but under the cash basis, it's when cash is received. With expenses, accrual basis is in the period costs are used to help produce revenues. And the cash basis is when cash is paid. Did you ever get put into the class? Yeah. Okay. Can we talk after? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to point you out, but it was on my mind. Okay. No guys, generally accepted accounting principles require the accrual basis of accounting. So <clears throat> we can look at problems such as this, where on December 12th, we provide soccer training to customers for cash. Under the accrual basis, it would be recorded as revenue, but it would also be recorded as revenue under the cash basis. Because under the accrual basis, we recorded as revenue when we provided the service, which we did. Under the cash basis of accounting, it would be recorded because we received the cash. Make sense? December 17th, we provide soccer training to customers on account. Would that be recorded under the accrual basis? Yes, it would, because we provided the service. But it wouldn't be recorded as revenue under the cash basis because we didn't get paid for it. Does that make sense? How about this one, guys? We receive cash in advance for soccer training sessions to be given in the future, $6,000. Is that revenue under the accrual basis? It's not revenue because we didn't provide the service yet, so it's technically a liability. But even though we didn't provide the services yet for cash basis, it doesn't matter. Did we get the cash? Then we show it as revenue. So know that it's pretty revenue 
under the cash basis is just when you collect the cash, when you pay the expense. But under the accrual basis, it's when you do the service or provide the service or product to the customer. On December 1st, we pay one year of rent in advance. So we don't provide, we don't show that as an expense because it's all prepaid rent until we use it up. But under the cash basis, that entire 60,000 would be treated as an expense because we paid it, okay? Next, we purchase supplies on account for 23,000. We don't show it as an expense here. We show it as an asset supplies. And then we only show it as an expense once we use up those supplies. And under cash basis, it's not recorded because we didn't pay for it. But this December 28th will be for both. The salaries were earned by the employees. And so we would claim that as an expense. And under cash basis, we would claim it as an expense because we paid for the expense. What this is showing you is the difference between accrual basis and cash basis. And guys, the truth is it's all about timing. Under the accrual basis of accounting, we record revenues when we provide the goods and services. And we record expenses with the revenues they help to generate. However, under the cash basis of accounting, we record revenues when we get the cash and we record expenses when we pay the bills. Now, what I'm gonna do this time is we're gonna jump to the homework real quick. So if you have your computers, awesome, because you can go along with me on this homework problem, okay? How's it going, you guys in um, online? You okay? Yeah. I'm good. Good. Lucky you, you didn't have to get out in this bad weather today. But I'm gonna save those bad days for when it's really snowy. Cause that's when you get accidents all over the roads. Okay. <laughs> So I want to look at homework. No, I, not that. I want student view. Let's look at the, I believe it's the first problem. Sorry, I don't know if you guys have been experiencing this, but I sure have. It spins a lot. Yeah, like the book, when you read the book and stuff, it kind of will start reading and stop out of nowhere. And start you know, we're all paying good money. Well, you guys are paying good money to have this system. And I mean, I've complained about another class because the solutions were wrong. <laughs> And then, you know, you hate to be a complainer, but then um, when it didn't get fixed for almost a week, then I had to go, you go higher up. Um, so anyway, what I'm hoping to do is work on the first problem. Are you guys all in and I'm the only one not in? Y'all are all in. I'm in. Well, maybe I'm trying to learn patience here. So the first problem, I believe, talks about accrual versus cash, doesn't it? Yes? Am I losing it? It does. The first problem, does it discuss accrual versus cash? Yeah, OK. So we will, let me get out of it in here. Maybe I was. Okay.
Okay. Are you hooked up to the school's Wi-Fi? I am. Well, maybe that's the problem. Well, when I'm in this building, I have to be in the school's Wi-Fi because, you know, it's this building's so full of cement. But you're right. But all the other students are in it, so I think it's just me. Okay, now this is the problem for each transaction. We're going to determine the amount of revenue or expense, if any, that is recorded under the accrual basis of accounting or the cash basis of accounting. I want to give you three minutes to just attempt it on your own, and then we're going to go back and come up with the solutions, okay? Now, guys, the reason I'm doing that is I want you to try it, and then when we process each one, it can make sense to you why I'm picking the, the manner in which I am, okay? Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, I do have a question that's kind of unrelated to this that I've been thinking about. So like, you know how like you provide information to external parties, right? Yes. Would it be considered insider trading if you use that information to make a decision on trading? No, or not at all. Because this is the whole purpose of these financial statements are for external users. What would be insider trading? Because uh, I, I work for a company. I see. And I know we're getting ready to um, purchase another company. And based on the knowledge I have, because I'm an insider, I profit from that insider knowledge. That's what would be insider trading. Ah, oh, that's great to know. That's really yeah. useful, actually. Okay. And I think that is why Martha Stewart got in trouble, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's look at these. When we receive cash from customers in advance for services to be provided, under the accrual basis of accounting, are we going to record that as revenue? No. No, because we did not provide the services yet. Under the cash basis of accounting, will we record that as revenue? Yes. We will. Okay. Does anyone have a question about that one? Does that make sense? Next one, <laughs> pay utility bill for the previous period, $150. Would we record that as an expense? No. no. Can I tell you why? It says previous period. Yeah. Okay. So even though we paid it this year, this month, because it incurred the previous month, that is when we would show that expense, even though we didn't pay it then that's when the expense was incurred. So but under cash basis, we will show that because we paid the bill. Yes. So we under cash, we'll show it as expense, right? Correct. Okay, I got that right then. All right. Okay, we pay for insurance in advance of the period to be covered for 2000 bucks. Under accrual basis, we would record that as prepaid insurance, wouldn't we? 
as yes. an asset. Therefore, we wouldn't have an expense until the insurance is expired. Yeah. But under cash basis, would we record this as an expense? Yes. Yes. Number four, pay workers salaries for the current period. That's the catch there. We would show that under the accrual basis because it occurred, the salaries were incurred, and we would also record it under the cash basis because we paid the cash. As an expense, right? Correct. Okay. There was something where it says that you do the opposite. Um, I feel like I forget what the terminology was. So you do the opposite of what you uh, normally do. Yeah. So. Could you be thinking about journal entries when you close the books? It might be. Hang in there with me, dude. Okay. <laughs> but nothing. Please hear me. Ask me anything, but I think we're at the end of the chapter because it's the opposite. Yes. Okay. So incur costs for employee salaries in the current period, but we don't pay the thousand dollars. Would we show that under the accrual basis? We would yeah. because they were incurred. But we wouldn't show it under the cash basis because we didn't pay the cash yet, did we? No. Right? Right. Receive cash from customers at the time of service, 1700. Would we record what? that as revenue under accrual? Yep. Yep. How about under the cash basis? Yeah. Number seven. <laughs> we received cash from customers. No, sorry. Number seven, purchase office supplies on account for 330. Remember, supplies don't get expensed until they're used up under the accrual basis. So that would not be. And under the cash basis, it wouldn't be because we didn't pay for anything. Number eight, borrow cash from the bank, 4,000. That's nothing, right? No. Because we're, what we're looking here for is revenues or expenses, right? Or maybe they just want us to keep it blank. I, I'm just trying to see if, okay. I was okay to just do zeros there. Nine, receive cash from customers for services performed in the previous period. Under the accrual basis, when would we report that revenue? When you did the service. When we did the services. So we wouldn't show that as revenue under accrual, but would we under cash basis? Yeah. Yes. Number 10, pay for advertising to appear in the current period. We would record that under the accrual basis because it's the current period. And we, re we would record it under the cash basis because we pay cash for the expense. Okay? So I got a question. Yes. For number seven, seven, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be like nothing happened on either side? Okay, let's talk about why. <clears throat> when we purchase office supplies on account, think about it. What gets debited? Supplies. What gets well, credited? Cash. Accounts payable on account. Oh, yeah. So nothing's going to happen under the accrual side because it wasn't an expense. And under the cash side, we're not going to record it because we didn't pay the cash yet. Okay. Okay. So we when do you record it? Once we Correct. use up the supplies. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Any questions on that 
while since we're done. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, which of the following would be recorded as an expense under the accrual basis of accounting? The company purchase office supplies with cash and does not use the supplies? No. No. The company uses utilities in the current period, but does not pay cash. Utilities, they get they, used. They got used. Therefore, we would show an expense. Come on. We would sh under, oh, sorry. Okay, this said at accrual. Oh my goodness. Did I just lose my PowerPoint? I think it just crashed on you. That's different. So, um, Okay, let's find it. Okay, so the the correct answer would be B for the accrual basis of accounting. We use the utilities, even though we didn't pay for it with cash, we still will record it under the accrual basis. Now, um, why wouldn't it, it's, like, could it be C or? See, the company provides services to customers for cash. Okay, guys, this is a great learning um, learning experience. Let's read the question again. Which of the following would be recorded as an expense? Do you see how they can trick you? Because last yesterday when I was doing a Zoom class, someone asked me the same thing. Because it is accrual, but it's an expense, not revenue. Okay? Because it's already used up. And then which the following would be recorded as an expense under the cash basis of accounting? The company purchases office supplies. The company purchases office supplies with cash, but doesn't use the supplies. That would be it. Yeah. We only care about when we pay the bill. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look at this exercise. And again, determine when are we going to record the revenue. American Airlines collects cash on June 12th from the sale of a ticket to a customer. The flight occurs on August 16th. When will this revenue be recognized, guys? When the flight occurs. Remember, even if you get the cash ahead of time, it's a liability until you provide the service. In this example, the service is the flight. The flight happens August 16th. That's when we show the revenue. So that, uh, is that following the, the flight occurs on August 16th or that or like, uh... When we, okay, what's gonna happen in June when the customer, the airline collects the cash from the customer. On that day, we will debit our cash and we will credit our deferred liability or deferred revenue because we haven't provided the service yet. But then on August 16th, we'll debit our deferred revenue and credit our revenue, okay? How about this one? A customer purchases sunglasses from Eddie Bauer on January 27th on account. Eddie Bauer receives payment from the customer on February 2nd. When does the revenue take place? The first date. On January 27th, because yeah. that's when the customer received the goods, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about this one? 
On March 30th, the customer pre-orders 10 Supreme pizzas from Pizza Hut for a birthday party. The pizzas are prepared and delivered on April 2nd. The company receives cash at the time of delivery. When would we record this as revenue? When they made it the second day. I'm sorry, what'd you say, honey? The second date, like not the yes. first, I would say not the first date because the first date was just a Correct, order. and why is that? It was just being ordered. It was Nothing. just being ordered. Yeah. The service wasn't delivered yet. So it would be on April 2nd when the pizzas were delivered. A customer pays in advance for a three month subscription to Sports Illustrated on July 1st. Issues are scheduled for delivery each week from July 1st through September 30th. When would those be recognized as cash? I'm going to pay in advance for three months. On July, uh, nope. Hey, guys. Is that cash? Oh yeah, as cash on July 1st. So what it will do is it will be recognized each magazine that's delivered. It's like season tickets to football games or to uh, musicals. If you pay for a season ticket holder, and let's say there are 10 issue, 10 different um, e events. In this case, there's 12 different magazines that will be delivered. So one twelfth of the revenue will be recognized as each magazine goes out. Does that make sense? Yeah. What? So that would be the scenario if, in fact, there's a lump sum, but if if they're spread out over time, you recognize it as you receive that portion. So in this case, as each magazine's delivered, that portion of revenue gets recognized. Okay, this is, I accidentally put this in here twice, sorry. So what we are gonna learn about is how we are gonna need to create adjusting journal entries before we prepare our financial statements because there are gonna be these four examples of adjustments needed. Prepayments, we can prepay expenses or we can have someone who gives us cash for revenues we haven't earned yet. Both of these prepayments, we don't recognize the expense or the revenue right away. But once the expense has incurred, we need to recognize it. Or once the revenue has been earned, we need to create an adjusting entry to recognize it. Now, remember, with a prepaid expense, such as prepaying advertising, or prepaying rent, or prepaying insurance, initially, we pay cash, but we created an asset for that prepaid expense. But then through the passing of time, when the cost gets used up, it's at that time we need to debit our expense and credit or reduce our prepaid asset. That would be the adjusting entry. Another one with deferred revenues. A client gives us cash up front, but we have not provided the services yet. The adjusting entry would then be, we would decrease our deferred revenue, that liability, and then show that we earned that revenue. There's two other kinds of adjusting entries. One is an accrued expense and one is an accrued revenue. Accrued expenses are, we, pay, we um, had utilities we used, but we haven't paid for them yet. 
we're going to record that accrued expense that was used up, even though we didn't pay for it yet, as um, we'd show the expense and we'd show a liability showing we owe utilities payable, you know, rent payable. And then when we pay it, that's then when we'll get rid of our liability and credit our cash because we're using cash up. Yes. I don't know if this goes with it, but Man. say I have uh, a buy equipment and it's like um, hey, I, I paid for the um, year, but I use the equipment. I only use yeah. X amount of equipment. Say I pay ten thousand dollars, five thousand. Is that be part of this? Um, Not yet, because. In we will get on something called depreciation soon, but this is more that we had a telephone bill that was used up the month happened, but we just haven't paid the bill yet. So we want to report it as an expense in this period, even though we haven't paid it. So we would show it as a telephone expense and then an account payable. The adjusting journal entry down the road will be get rid of the liability because now we paid it and we credit our cash. Another accrued type of journal entry is accrued revenues. We have provided the service, but we haven't sent the bill out yet. So in that case, we would show a debit to accounts receivable and asset and credit our revenues, our service revenues. But then when we get the cash, we'll reduce our accounts receivable and we'll debit, we'll increase our cash. So we're gonna go through these four examples, okay? Mm -hmm. Some transactions have occurred during the period, but have not been recorded by the end of the period. Often these um, often include activities that occur daily, such as using supplies, earning interest, and rent expiring. So what we're gonna do, yeah, we, um, here's a, an example here. On December 1st, we purchased one year of rent in advance. For 60,000. It was 5,000 a month. That happened December 1st. 30 days later, one month of rent has expired. Yeah. So guys, think about it. When we initially created this transaction, we debited prepaid rent and we credited cash. A month later, one month of rent has expired. So the adjusting journal entry we will do is we will debit rent expense for one month, $5,000, and we will credit our prepaid rent because we're reducing the asset because it's expired. It's now an expense, one month of it. And so we're reducing the asset and we're increasing the expense. This is adjust, an adjusting journal entry we need to do to make sure we're recording our expenses accurately. Can I ask a question really quick? Uh -huh. So there was a similar um, question on the review, and but this time it asks for two uh, properties that a business had bought, right? I was confused because I knew I was counting like in a in a two two year period. Like they bought it, they pre prepaid the rent for two years on both properties. Okay. So I first I put them individually, but then I put them together, and then I didn't really understand the question because like I knew you had to. They said for four months or whatever. So are we supposed to write the balance? Because the question asked for like the uh, a larger balance pretty much for both of them collected kept together and not the <laughs> like five per 5,000 per month. So I was a little confused on the question because I know you, you, you could add them together because they both have a two year 
uh, prepaid rent on each property. Mm -hmm. But the properties, I think, um, would equal the same. I don't know. I was trying to. I was trying to figure that question out because, like, I put them both together, but I don't know if the rent was the same for each property. You guys if that know what you're sense. talking about? Yeah. Huh? One started um, 2022, and then the next one started 2023. Um, and they wanted to know what 2023 in December was. Okay, um, so what they're trying to do, in this case, we're just dealing with one month. Right. But a lot of problems we're going to see is they'll have it in the middle of the year, and they'll say five months have expired. What's the journal entry? Because people don't always do these adjusting journal entries each month. They usually do it at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And so I bet that's kind of what they were trying to have you look at is to see throughout the year how much rent or whatever it is do you need to say is now an expense instead of a prepaid rent. So we'll have some problems like that here. Okay. This one is just kind of starting simple with one month. Okay. So in this example, we're going to debit our rent expense because we've used up one month now and we'll credit our prepaid rent. Prepaid. Now, guys, this is a good example of prepaid expenses. On December 6, we purchased supplies for $23,000 on account. And at the end of December, account of supplies reveals that only $13,000 of supplies remain. Well, if it started with 23 and then it ended at 13, that means we've used up $10,000 worth of supplies, right? Yeah. So the journal entry to record that would be debit supplies expense and we would credit supplies. We no longer have that asset we need to reduce it to accurately reflect what is available. So we debit our supplies expense, we credit supplies. On December 1st, we purchased equipment for 120,000 cash. By December 31st, one month of the equipment's use has expired. Now that we're getting into a new concept here Mm -hmm. called depreciation. When we purchase a big asset, that asset is going to provide us with a future, a current benefit and a future benefit. So the way we account for the use or using up that asset is we show something called depreciation as an allocation to offset the cost of the equipment. So in this example, they're saying we've used up $2,000 of this asset. The way we record that is by debiting an account called depreciation expense. And we credit an account that is called accumulated depreciation. Now we call this accumulated depreciation a contra account because it offsets, instead of us right, um, crediting the actual equipment, we want to keep the equipment at the, the cost we purchased it for. So that accumulated depreciation allows us to see how much we've been taking in accumulated depreciation on that particular piece of equipment. Okay. Here is an example of some problems here. This one shows on November 30th where the supplies is at, was at. This shows on December 31st where the supplies are at. It tells us purchases of supplies in December total 4,500. Okay, this is giving us the beginning of December, the end of December, but it's letting us know we purchased supplies for 4,500. So let me just show it to you like this. Just so you understand. So 
supplies. Is the account here? And it tells us it started with 2000 on November 30th. Then it says at the end of the period, December 31st, it was at 3000? Yeah, 3500. 3500. Guys, it tells us during the month it purchased $4,500. So let's just say on December 10th, it purchased $4,500. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is it we need to do here to get an ending balance of $3,500? Minus 50. We, didn't, we need to show a credit for 3000 to end up with 3500 in supplies. Why would we credit this 3000 Could it be we used it up? We, we don't have those supplies anymore. We're only showing $3,500 worth of supplies in the cabinet. Okay? And so... We would create this journal entry of 3,000 to show, oh, I didn't mean to do that, darn. We would create that journal entry to show that we've used up the supplies. So in this example, we would debit our supplies expense for 3,000 and we would credit supplies for 3000 because we've used them up. They have become an expense. They are no longer an asset. That would be the adjusting journal entry. Where'd you get the 3000 from? I, 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 I forced it over here. I forced it to happen because if we, we know it started at two. Yeah. Oh, we okay. We I added 4,500 during the period. Yeah. We know we ended it with 3,500. We had to have created a journal entry of 3,000, which is showing right here. Okay. Okay. Next, we show prepaid insurance. The year started with 8,000. We ended the month, excuse me, the month. We started the month with eight. We ended the month with six. It tells us there were no insurance payments made during December. Think about it. Do you see how I'm kind of creating this? I would do the same thing. I would show insurance. Excuse me, is this insurance? We started with what, eight? 8,000. And you ended with 6,000. And there's a 2000 difference. We end it with six. Yeah. What journal entry did we need to do to get it to 6,000? We had Nine, to have credited yeah. this too. Yeah. Well, we credited it too because we used up some insurance. So we debit insurance expense 2000, we credit our prepaid insurance for 2000. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Next, salaries payable. We started with 11,000. We ended with 16,000. It tells us 11,000 is paid to employees during December for November's salaries. Again, I will just create salaries expense, was it? Or salaries payable. payable. We started with 11, 
Yep. Ended with 16. And we ended with 16. And it told us, excuse me, this should be 11 over here because it's a credit. 16. So we had a balance of 11,000. It told us we paid the salaries in December for November for 11,000, which means, think about it. In November, we showed salaries expense 11,000, salaries payable 11,000. Now in December, it tells us we paid the salaries. We would have debited salaries payable 11,000, and we would have credited cash. So what happened that we now show a $16,000 balance in salaries payable? That's for December, right? Correct, for December now. Yeah. So what? Well, I'm we asking. We incurred salaries expense of 16,000 mm -hmm. and we credited salaries payable of 16,000. The same concept, we haven't paid it yet, but since the salaries were incurred, we need to show the expense and the adjusting and the payable. So and in this case, in January, when we pay the salaries, it's at that time we'll debit our payable and we credit our cash, okay? Next one, which of the following is recorded with an adjusting entry associated with a prepaid expense. So when we are dealing with these prepaid expenses and then we have an adjusting entry against the prepaid expense to show it as an expense, do we credit an asset? Do we debit a liability? Do we credit an expense or debit an asset? Think it through on the adjusting entry. You're going to do something with. Won't we credit an asset, guys? Think about it. The reason we credit an asset is because the initial transaction was a prepaid asset and we credited cash. When we use it up, we then debit the expense, supplies expense, rent expense, whatever, and we credit that prepaid asset, right? To reduce mm -hmm. it because now it's an expense. So <clears throat> let's see if there is a homework problem we can work on. Um, I don't think. Let's look at this one. So this one tells us on July 1st, 2024, Gamecock received $6,000 from a customer for advertising services to be given evenly over the next 12 months. Uh, I, we're not there yet, I, I shouldn't do that one. Let's do this one. At the end of the year, income taxes are owed, that are owed are at $7,000. What's gonna happen when we've incurred an expense, but we haven't paid it yet? You credit the accrual and then you do nothing with cash. We do nothing with cash. We debit income tax expense, right? For 7,000 and we credit income tax payable for 7,000, okay? How about this one though? 
On May 1st, 2024, the company paid $4,800 for a two-year fire and liability insurance. The company debited prepaid insurance on May 1st. So how many months it was 4,800 is a two year policy, is a two 24 month policy, okay? So basically that means every month, $200 of insurance gets, is expired, gets used up. From May until the end of the year is how many months? Well, oh, from May, sorry. Nine. Eight. Right? Eight months. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Eight months. How much insurance got used up if it's 200 a month? 16,000. 1,600. 1600. Sorry. So what we would do here for this particular problem is we would show insurance expense of 1600 and what are we going to credit we paid insurance it is does that make sense why guys yes sure it says here the company paid on may 1st $4,800 for a two-year fire and liability insurance company uh, policy. When that happened, the company debited prepaid insurance. So they debited prepaid insurance, they credited cash. Now, our job is on December 31st, we have to record an adjusting journal entry. What they want to know is, okay, we did that back in May, but just through the passage of time, we need to fix this. So we have used up eight months of insurance. We need to show on our books at the end of the period, we don't have that asset anymore. It's not $4,800. It's been reduced $1,600, and that's gone into an expense. We still have part of that asset. We still have $3,200 of it, but we don't have $4,800 of it because we've used it up just because of the passage of time. Does that make sense? Okay, moving on. Depreciation. Here you see in FedEx how they list their assets and then they show the accumulated depreciation here, which means all of the depreciation that has been taken on these above assets. So they list the assets at cost, less this accumulated depreciation shows us the net book value of their assets. Which of the following is equivalent to the book value of an asset? It's gonna be cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation, okay? That's what we've used already. That's how much depreciation we've taken against those assets. Another type of adjusting journal entry deals with what we call deferred revenues. Customers gave us money up front, but we haven't provided the service yet. When that happens, the customer gives us money, so we debit cash, but since we haven't provided the service, we credit a deferred revenue account. But what happens, maybe over that year, <laughs> that the services are provided and the liability isn't out there anymore, we need to create an adjusting entry to get rid of that or reduce that liability 
and show we actually have the revenues. So here's the deal, guys. On December 23rd, a company received $6,000 of cash in advance from customers. By December 31st, $2,000 of that $6,000 has been earned. Okay. So if at, during this period, this week, we earned $2,000 of that $6,000, won't we create a journal entry to debit our liability called deferred revenue? Mm -hmm. And we credit service revenue because now we've earned right. two of 2,000 of that money. We still have a balance in our deferred revenue of 4,000, but it's gone down some. And we can show that as revenue. Okay. So um, let's look at this one. On December 28th, 2022, Shopper receives a $4,500 payment from a customer for services to be rendered evenly over the next three months. So on November 1st, they debited cash, they credited a deferred revenue. They were going to provide services of a third of this each month over three months. So 4,500 divided by three is what? 1250, 1150, Fif duh, 1500, 40, I'm tired, um, 1500. So at the end of December, we've provided a third of those services already. Therefore, we debit our deferred revenue, 1500, and we show it as service revenue because we've earned it. We'll do the same in January. We'll do the same in February because they gave us three months worth of money in advance for services that were going to be provided over three months. How about this one? A company pays a local radio station $2,700 for 30 radio ads that were to be aired, 10 per month, throughout December, January, and February. Initially, they debited prepaid advertising and they credited cash. Well, at the end of December, a third of that asset prepaid advertising has been used up. So won't we debit our advertising expense? And won't we credit our prepaid advertising because we're reducing that asset by $900? Okay. Employee salaries for the month of December, totaling $8,000, will be paid on January 7th. So they're telling us those salaries haven't been incurred we just haven't paid it yet. That's why we debit our salaries expense <clears throat> and we credit our salaries payable. This is new. Interest. We borrow money from a bank. The note is signed on August 31st. And we know there's a 9% annual interest rate. The note will be paid back um, on, excuse me, I just got to fix this, the 20, 2023. Okay, so we need to show the interest on this. 70,000 times 9%. We divide that by 12 and we'd multiply it times four months, September, October, November, December. So let me just show you what I would do. 
you take 70,000 times 9% is 6,300. That's for an annual over a year. You take that divided by 12, means the interest each month is $525. You take that times four, you're gonna get $2,100 of interest expense. And we credit interest payable for 2,100 also. Does that make sense? Remember, this here is called an accrued expense. They're recorded when a company has a cost that is used to help produce revenue, but we've not yet paid cash for that cost. So we record that cost as an expense and the amount that's owed we record as a liability. In the example of salaries, in December 31st, 3,000 in salaries have been earned by employees for the final three days of the month. But these salaries are not paid by the end of the month. That's why we have to show a debit to salaries expense for 3,000 and a credit to salaries payable for 3,000. When it finally does get paid in January, on January 4th, then at that time, we would debit this $3,000 of salaries expense. And in this example, there were some salaries expense in January that is also being paid. How about this one, guys? I want y'all to take a moment and look at this and tell me what you think, okay? If a company pays an employee $100 per day for a five-day work week that runs Monday to Friday, and December 31st is a Tuesday. What is the amount of the salaries adjustment at the end of the year, assuming that Friday is the payday? What do we do here, guys? <clears throat> who's who's a c wouldn't it be b or excuse me d think about it december 31st ends on a tuesday so at the end of december don't we need to show salaries were earned or incurred for Monday and Tuesday. But since they're not gonna be paid till Friday, don't we need to show a debit to salaries expense and a credit to salaries payable for that amount? Make sense? Here's another one. By December 31st, utility costs of 9,000 have been incurred but have not been paid. We would debit our utilities expense for 9,000 and we would credit our utilities payable of 9,000, wouldn't we? Right? By December 31st, one month of interest has been charged for borrowing 100,000 
at 12% interest. We would show on December 31st, interest expense for a thousand, and we would credit interest payable for a thousand. No, guys, when recording the interest payable on a borrowed amount, students sometimes mistakenly credit the liability associated with the principal amount, such as a note payable. But we want to keep the interest amount separate from the note payable amount. Make sure to record the interest payable in a separate account called interest payable. So we keep the interest owed separate from the note balance. Okay, guys, look at this one. I want everyone to attempt this, okay? Is it B? D is what you said? B. B? Third. B. So we take our 200,000 times 6%, divide it by 12 months, multiply it by two months to get interest expense of 200, and interest payable of $200, okay? Okay. Okay. Remember accrued revenues are when we provide services or products to customers, but haven't yet received the cash. It records the revenue and an asset for the amount expected to be received. So we um, initially debit the asset, accounts receivable, and we credit a sales revenue account. So let's look at this one, guys. By December 31st, services of 7,000 have been provided to customers, but have not yet been billed. We would debit our accounts receivable and we would credit our service revenue for 7,000. Okay, so after we create all of these journal entries, we then will prepare what we call an adjusted trial balance. This adjusted trial balance is what we will use to prepare our financial statements. We will use our revenues and expenses to show our net income. The first statement we do is our income statement. Then we will create the um, second portion, the statement of stockholders equity. We'll use our common stock retained earnings, dividends, and the net income from the income statement to create our statement of stockholders equity. Then lastly, we create our balance sheet. <clears throat> so from this adjusted trial balance, we will show our revenue of 72,000 and all of our expenses here to create our income statement. 
From there, we create our statement of stockholders equity, which basically the net income will come from the income statement, but everything else will come from the adjusted trial balance. Lastly, we then create our balance sheet. So we did all that work to finally get our adjusted trial balance right so we could prepare our financial statements. We send out our financial statements, but what we need to do is we now, after the financial statements are sent out, we need to close our books so we can get ready for the next period. Because every period we show our income and our expenses. So we can't keep adding to that income for this period. We need to clean those out. So what we do to close out our books, we take our revenue accounts and our expense accounts and we zero them out. And we put them into retained earnings so we can show and reflect what happened this year with retained earnings. We also take our dividends and close those out also. The purpose of closing entries is to transfer the balances of all temporary accounts to the retained earnings. Temporary accounts are revenue accounts, expense accounts found in the income statement and dividends. That's what you zero out to put into retained earnings. How do we do this? We want to zero out revenues. So to zero out revenues, what we do is we do the opposite. Revenues have a normal credit balance. So to zero them out, we will debit service revenue and we will credit retained earnings. Revenues, this increases our retained earnings, doesn't it? Then we close out all of our expense accounts. What we do when we close out all our expense accounts, we do the opposite again. And what that does is we credit all of our expenses and debit retained earnings because we know those expenses decrease our retained earnings. We do the same with dividends. Dividends we zero out and dividends also decrease our retained earnings. Once we do this, all of our temporary accounts, our revenues, our expenses, and our dividends have gone into retained earnings. So retained earnings is a permanent account. So once we have created those journal entries to close out retained earnings, we can create what we call a closing trial balance and that closing trial balance is only going to have balance sheet accounts because revenues have been zeroed out, expenses have been zeroed out, and dividends have also been zeroed out, and they have all gone into the retained earnings bucket. So we have zeroed out all of our temporary accounts and we're ready to start the next period. This is the very ending step of the accounting cycle. So as you know, we, create, we started by analyzing transactions, creating journal entries, doing a trial balance. We learn now how to take all these adjusting journal entries to make sure our books are accurate. Then we have what we call an adjusted trial balance that we can create our financial statements with. But to start the next year, we need to zero out all those accounts so we start fresh again. No, every item 
in the balance sheet is a permanent account. The only temporary accounts are revenues, expenses, and dividends, okay? So I think what I wanna show you here, I have so many problems in here. I think it's like almost overwhelming, but let's go to the homework, okay? Let's go back to the homework and kind of work through some of these problems. Now, I did number two and number three, but we haven't done one, four, and five. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes and attempt one, four, and five. And then when I come back, we'll go over those, okay? I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. Okay, we good?
Okay, who wants to take number one? Anyone? Debit refer deferred revenue for 3,600. Sorry, Alexis, what'd you say, hon? Do you, you debit deferred revenue for 3,600 and then credit service revenue? So on J July 1st, Gamecock received 6,000 for a customer to be given evenly over the next 10 months. So we've got six months um, out of 10 months to adjust for so 6,000 divided by 10 months is 600 a month right mm -hmm. and 3600 is right so for number one we would debit deferred revenue for 3600 and we would credit service revenue Right, or what kind of revenue is there in here? For would it be advertising revenue? So, excuse me, I'm in the wrong place here. So we would debit um, deferred revenue and we would credit a revenue. I'm just trying to uh, see what it would be. Not service fee. Should be advertising revenue, but does anyone see an, an ex revenue here? Sales revenue or 3,600, okay? Perfect, Alexis. Sales revenue is wrong. There's another revenue I got to show. I think it's service revenue. Service revenue, thank you. Thank you, okay. Next, let's look at number four. Who wants to take that one? Come on, guys. Who? Don't make me call on you. That wouldn't be nice. And definitely don't look at me because then I won't call on you. Do you guys know that trick? <laughs> Who wants to take it? I'm not going to call on you, by the way. I'm not going to ever embarrass you. I'll take it. I might need some help, though. On September 1st, 2024, the company borrowed $20,000 from a local bank and signed a note. Principal and interest at 12% will be paid on August 31st, 2025. So we have incurred or accrued interest expense for four months september october november and december okay twenty thousand at twelve percent what i would do there is i would say twenty thousand times twelve percent is twenty four hundred i divide that by twelve and then $600, or excuse me, four months should be 800 bucks, right? So wouldn't you debit interest expense here for 800 bucks? And credit what? Interest payable? For 800 bucks? What do you guys think? Last one. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. So I was going between interest and 
um, since it's notes payable too, how come it wouldn't be like notes payable because, with interest? Um, because we keep the note payable separate from the interest payable. The note payable is the lump amount we borrowed. So we're going to need to pay back that entire note payable in a year. But when we accrue our interest, we want to keep that amount of interest we owe separate from the note payable. Okay. Next, number five says at year end, there is a $2,700 debit balance in the supplies account. Only $1,000 of supplies remain on hand at the end of the year. What are we going to do here, guys? What will we debit? What will we credit? Supplies, expense, and supplies. We debit supplies, expense for how much? $1,700. $1,700, and we credit supplies at $1,700. Awesome. Do you guys understand how we're doing that? Now, guys, you're going to have more of these type of journal entries in the homework here. This is important because it helps you understand how to figure out these adjusted entries. Okay, so the next one will be a um, problem like that. Then you are going to see an adjusted trial balance on number five. You're going to see an adjusted trial balance, and we have to prepare the financial statements. So I want to work with you on this. The first financial statement we always do is the income statement. Do you see, guys, that as you start here with service revenue, new construction, and you move down to the service fee expense, all of this is part of your income statement, right? Take a moment and attempt to fill this in on your income statement, okay? This will be very helpful for you.
Okay. So guys, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna start with our service revenues, right? So we're gonna start with 450 in new construction, 280 in remodeling. Okay, so we've got our total revenues. What about our expenses? Salaries, supplies, rent, insurance. Salary supplies, rent, insurance, utility, interest, and service fee. Utility, interest expense, service fee. Okay, salaries are 160, 285, 50, 25, 160. Right? Supplies expense 285, rent 50, 25, 42. Nine, so, what would our net income be here, guys? I'm sorry. Okay. That's the first step. Now we need that 86,000 to do our um, statement of stockholders equity, right? We're going to add that net income of 86,000 over to our return earning side. Prepare the statement of stockholders equity. Note that during the year, the company issued additional common stock for 30,000, right? And this amount is included in the amount of common stock in the adjusted trial balance. So this common stock of 200,000 should be our ending number, okay? Which means our beginning number here is 170,000. Got it? Yep. Our retained earning shows it's at 31,000. And our dividends are at 26,000. Right? So what does that make our total of retained earnings here? 60, 91,000? Yes, no? Yes, no, what do you guys think? I guess we'll find out. Oh, I meant less dividends. Sorry, guys. My less dividends, okay? Now we're gonna need these balances here in order to prepare our balance sheet, won't we? 291, so let's go to the next requirement. And I'm gonna put that in right now. Stockholders equity, 200, 
and 91. So our common stock and our retained earnings We know we got that one right, okay? Current assets. The current assets generally include cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and prepaid insurance, okay? Cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and prepaid insurance, cash, Accounts receivable, supplies, and prepaid insurance, okay? Then our long-term asset is gonna be our investment. I'm gonna just get out of here and show it to you, um, the solution, okay? Because we're running out of time. So let me go in here. But guys, what I want you to do is go through the homework, use the discussion in the D2L for help. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you need help, get the help there. So real quick, for the first homework, we already went through it. For the second homework, this is a tough one. So make sure you have these answers down, okay? Um, I'll make them bigger for you. And write these down too, this is helpful. Then, did you get that, that one? And this one. Yes, done. Next one. We went through this one. Okay. Next one. We did not go through, but here's some help for you. Okay. Next one. Here is the income statement we completed. Here's the statement of stockholders equity we completed. Here's the balance sheet we did not complete. Okay. Notice current liabilities go up here, those that are payable within a year. Notes payable usually are those that are um, need to be paid over a year. Or I should say accounts payable, those are usually under like 30 days. And then the notes payable are more. This problem has you creating uh, year-end closing entries. and then creating the post-closing trial balance. Then two more. This one does the whole gamut. You've got to post the transactions to the um, accounts. Then you have to prepare an adjusted trial balance, which then makes you prepare an income statement. 
statement of stockholders' equity, a balance sheet. The journal entries to close the accounts and the post-closing trial balance. Okay. Last one. Here are your journal entries. This is the hardest week you got. It only gets better. Next, the unadjusted trial balance. Next, adjustments. Adjusted trial balance. Income statement, balance sheet, closing entries, I think some of these will automatically happen for you. I just can't remember which one of these. Please use the chapter three discussion to get help. If you get stuck on something, send me an email, show me what, what problem you're working on, where you're stuck, I can help you. And here's your post-closing trial balance. Guys, the quiz has about 14 multiple choice. The key with this is if you understand what we went through, you'll be fine. You have two attempts on it though, okay? Take care guys. And oh, I should, let me just bet, preface it to say it has 13 multiple choice, but it has about seven fill in the blanks. So you need to learn how to do these adjusting journal entries. You'll be cool. Any questions before I end? Have a great week, guys.